Hi there, this is Steve Kaufman. I want to talk to you today about the, the best way to learn languages. The best way. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, someone brought to my attention um, a lady uh, who has written a book called, uh, I think, Language is Music. Her name is Susanna Reisky, if I'm not mistaken. And I saw a video of her being interviewed in English and Spanish, which she speaks fluently and apparently, and I don't I have no, not, no doubt, reason to doubt her, speaks seven languages fluently. And she says many things that I agree with about the importance of listening before you speak, uh, about the importance of getting the language in you before you try to spend too much time on grammar. Uh, she likes to listen to music. Uh, and she thinks that listening to music and listening to songs is the key to learning languages. That's something that I don't agree with, although I do agree with her that there is a music to language. And when I learned Chinese, for example, I spent an awful lot of time listening to comic dialogues in Chinese because I found the, their intonation very enchanting. Now, uh, so I had a look at what Susanna had to say. Then there was a gentleman who he styles himself the monk of Brooklyn, or the Brooklyn monk, who is a, a martial arts expert and also a language, uh, you know, a polyglot. And he came back and said, no, it's not that easy. You can't just listen to music. It takes a lot of hard work. When I study, I work five, six hours a day at my language, which I once did too. I did that once when I was learning Chinese. And that certainly can be effective. Uh, then I, of course, thought of my uh, friend Benny, who claims that the best way to learn to speak is just to speak from day one. Uh, I remember the video that I saw of uh, Alex Argelles showing sort of a day in the life of a polyglot, where he spends 15 minutes on ancient uh, Greek, uh, half an hour uh, writing out Russian, another half an hour in uh, Korean. Uh, spends his whole day, uh, 15 minutes, half an hour on different languages, uh, refreshing and, and, of course, developing new competence in those languages. Um, someone also commented on my blog, or I think at the forum at Link, that they were in a French class and the teacher said they're not, that the students were not allowed to do anything outside of the class because the teacher wanted to control what they learned. So, that's just to say that there are many different approaches. So, oh, and I forgot Moses. Moses McCormick, who um, many of you may know, and I've watched many of his videos, and has a very folksy style, and he's a very accomplished uh, polyglot, uh, seems to pick up languages quite quickly. And he recommends an approach, which you can find if you Google Moses McCormick, but it does involve learning certain key uh, phrases and key sort of trigger words in a language. And I certainly believe that there's a lot to that as well. Uh, Luca, Italian polyglot, who uh, he likes to listen. And uh, then, uh, I, if I remember correctly, he will try to translate what he listened to into Italian and write it out. Okay. So, and, and of course, my emphasis on a lot of listening and reading focus on vocabulary, occasional grammar review, and speak when you want to. Uh, so, what is the best way to learn languages? Well, in my opinion, first of all, let me say that the wonderful thing today is that we have access via the internet, via YouTube, to all these different people and their opinions on what is the best way to learn languages. So, if your teacher says you're not allowed to do anything outside the class, you no longer have to listen to the teacher. You can get the advice of Alex Argelius, the Brooklyn Monk, Moses McCormick, me, Benny, whomever you want. You can go looking for content wherever you want. You can more or less do whatever you want. So to that extent, the, the control that the teacher used to exercise over your learning is basically gone. So it's basically up to the learner to take advantage of that freedom. Uh, so uh, now you have the freedom. So what is the best way to learn? In my opinion, the best way to learn is whatever you like doing. Okay? It's that simple. If, for example, I would never do what Professor Argelius does. I just couldn't spend my day half an hour in this language, 20 on that language. I have to concentrate on one language. I am trying to take time away from my Russian 
in order to spend more time on Korean, I find it very difficult to do. Uh, to me, listening to songs doesn't do it because my perspective is that language learning is largely about vocabulary. Songs do not have a lot of vocabulary. Um, I've had my discussion with Benny. I don't believe you can start talking until you've got a lot of the language in you. I also believe that that when you speak depends on your situation, your opportunity, your personal preference, and so forth. So, however, and the other thing too is I don't spend a lot of time on, on spaced repetition systems. A lot of people come at me, how can you deny the science behind spaced repetition systems? There is no science if I don't like to spend my time doing it. Uh, I do review flashcards in Link and I click on the audio to hear it and I'll deliberately go into my vocabulary list and pick out all the genitive case that I've tagged in my link vocabulary and review them and listen to them and I'll go in and, and, and review all of the accusative or verbs of motion, things like that in Russian, a very deliberate study of specific things in flashcards with the sound on the flashcards that we now have. But mostly I just like to listen and read. And because I don't have to write an exam, because I'm not in a situation where I have to speak every day, my major concern is understanding. So today someone sent me a video in Russian of a debate between, uh, I think his name is Navalny, and, uh, who is a major critic of the regime in, in Russia, of the corruption in Russia, and a gentleman by the name of, uh, yeah, I think it's Alexei Navalny, and the other gentleman was Evgeny Fyodorov, who represented the Edina Rasiga party, and they had a the debate, and it was, I could understand it all. I'm happy. That to me is my goal. So what do you like to do and what are your goals? What are your needs? And, and based on that, you decide what's going to work for you. If you like what you do, you're going to end up spending time doing it. And all the time that you spend with the language is good. So if someone says, you know, comes up with a very structured, for example, mnemonic system and you associate words with colors or flowers or images, or someone says you should write very early because it's good for you. It is good to write, but if you don't want to write, you'll end up not doing it. Uh, if you like listening to songs, or we had Keith in Japan who liked watching movies, even when he didn't understand them. Uh, if he spends a lot of time doing that, that's good for him. Um, I've had many people tell me that they, they will uh, have, say, Spanish on in the background at work. There's many places in the United States where there's Spanish radio. So at work, they'll have Spanish on the background and that they claim that that helps them learn the language. And I am sure it does. It's not something that I would do. So simply because I would find it a bit distracting, but I am sure it's good for you. I'm sure it's good for you. Uh, so all I'm saying is that there are many, many different ways to learn. The most important thing is that you like what you're doing. Now, typically those people who like certain things will want to say that this is the best way. And I will quite frankly, say that because it works for me. But, and, and that's how we develop Link, based on what works for me. Now, uh, people who study the same way as I do, who have the same tastes as I do, the same preferences, the same interests and so forth, or similar, will like Link. Or maybe they'll find ways of using Link that suits what they like to do. Uh, but people who don't like doing that won't be successful there. So, so it's very important, I think, I think we should, we're all uh, fully justified, whether it be whoever, you know, to get on the internet and say, this is the best way because I believe in it and it works for me. And for some people it'll work. And other people will say, no, it's got to be this other way. And, and obviously, getting back to our Brooklyn monk, obviously if you can spend five, six, seven hours a day learning, you'll do better than if you only spend one hour a day. But my belief is that most people haven't got five, six hours a day uh, if they can at least discipline themselves to spend one hour a day mostly listening uh, to interesting things while doing other tasks, that that is at least practical for most people to do. So, but if they don't like listening, then that's not going to work. So, so there you have it. The best way to learn languages is whatever you like doing, whatever gets you spending time with the language, and whatever suits your particular situation and needs. Thank you for listening.